Welcome to another show, I'm Sid and in today's video I'll be going over the Duotone shader patch in Spark AR Studio which is a program used to create filters for Instagram and Facebook. If you're new to the channel I have over 50 tutorial videos in a playlist linked in the description for you to browse through and if you enjoy them and find anything useful don't forget to subscribe, hit like on a couple of those videos because it really helps grow the channel. Uh, also don't forget to hit like on this video and leave a comment below Let me know whether you're a new subscriber or an old subscriber because I'm quite interested to know. Uh, with that being said I'm going to pause this and start a new project so I can show off this duotone shader. So let's do that. I'm going to switch over to the face camera so that you can see me. Hello, here I am again. Uh, and we'll come over here first thing to layers and we're going to add a background and a foreground. Uh, this, this, these effects all typically will work on face meshes, objects, 3D objects, anything like that. But for these examples, I'm going to use the rectangles and uh, foreground background layer thing, just because it's an easy example to demonstrate on a screen. But yeah, you can try this with a bunch of different stuff. So now that we've got our layers, we're going to add our rectangles. So we've got one rectangle here nested inside of a canvas, which will duplicate, rename those foreground and background. Make sure that they're on the right layers over here. So our background one will switch that to the background layer. Then we control select all of them, hit the fit, fill width, fill height. And then what we're going to do next is add material layers for them, foreground and background. If I sneeze during this video, don't worry. It's just a uh, hay fever. It's like a common thing here in the UK and it's getting towards the summertime now. So, but yeah, we've got both of these now. So we control select both of those. Uh, naturally, we don't need to, but we can come up here now to the camera hit segmentation texture extraction that will create these two texture assets down here come up to our foreground and we'll add camera texture and the uh, alpha here we're going to hit that check mark and we're going to add a person segmentation mask that will cut us out from the background you don't really need to do this uh, you can actually uncheck it and it will just go back to like that but we'll leave it like that for now uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come here under add asset and we're going to import from AR library now we'll come down to patch assets and uh, we're going to choose the shaders collection and then we'll collect and we'll choose this duotone color shader patch now there's a little example here of how you want to do it uh how you want to set things up and some more details below so we'll import that into our project okay as you can see that's done so now we'll come back over here and we're going to view show patch editor so now that creates this down here uh what we're going to do is we're going to drag this duotone shader patch into our patch editor it'll create this nice little or it will create this nice little orange patch. Sorry, my nose is all blocked up because of, like I said, hay fever. Uh, it will create this nice little orange patch. Now we're going to take our camera texture that we've already created. And we're going to drag that in as well. And we're going to connect them both. So we're going to take the RGBA output of the camera texture and connect it to the texture input of the duotone shader patch. Now we need something to connect this to. So we're going to come up here to our background and our foreground. We'll control select because I want to use both for this example. Although you can use one of each. Uh, or anything, depends what it is, like I said, so you can use a 3D object or a face mesh. But if you use both, then what you'll see is it connects both and currently nothing's happening. That's because neither color has been set for A or B. If we set color A as white and color B as black, you'll see we end up with this negative effect. Okay, so if I set it now to white as color B as white and color A as black, you see it's more closely to a true tone color effect more like a photograph and the black and white's been reversed that's the way you should think about this so color a if the darker it is and the color b the lighter it is the closer you'll get to this true tone photographic type effect no matter which colors you're working with and if you alternate that so that you end up with black and white with color a as white and color b as black then you end up with a more negative effect so if you think about that when you're factoring in like the color choices that you make just know that the darker the color is for color a and the lighter the color is for color bit B, the more true to life the photo you'll get. I have an effect on my uh, Instagram, which is this basically, but it alternates between this version and the more true to life black and white photograph version. It's just, uh, it's available on my profile. You can go check that out. Follow me on Instagram if you like uh, to see that for yourself. But yeah, so we've played around with some colors. I'll show you some different types. It's always interesting as well. If you want to play around with stuff to start with black and white, uh, as these settings as they are and then just change them slightly so if you leave color b as white and just adjust the first color then you get some cool different effects because you know that whatever color you choose that isn't color b uh, that isn't white is going to be darker so it, it should match up quite well and the lighter you get the more 
it difficult it is to see, the more blown out the colours begin to look and the more cartoonish it becomes. But if you keep it dark, like a dark green or a purple maybe, then you can create these nice cool effects. And the same the other way. So if we have the black, do you know anything lighter than the black uh, should work quite well. So even if we have like a slightly darker colour, you see it's, it's pretty dark, like you can't really see very well. But it still works quite well because it's lighter than the black on top. And so you can adjust that again, you can choose like a lighter colour green, that looks quite nice. Or a red, that kind of gives the impression that you're in like a dark room where you take photographs. Like yeah, there's a lot of, lot of interesting things you can try. So we'll go back to black and white here. But if say for example you want to mix the colours up, you can have a nice blue, maybe go for a darker blue on the top. Uh, and something like a yellow underneath, that would work as a way to contrast the colours and mix them well together. And then if you were to reverse that, so let's say we have the yellow on top and then the darker blue down here, you see it creates a negative version of that colour. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool shader effect, you can implement it in a bunch of different ways, you can connect it with other, other shaders as well, but I'm not going to show you that in this video. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'm probably going to come back to something a little more palatable. I enjoyed the one that I made earlier uh, when I was testing this out. It was like something like this. Like, uh, was it this? No, it was around here. Maybe the purple one. I don't know. Anyway, I really liked it. It was something like this. But anyway, that's the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and subscribe so that you can be notified when I post more videos. Hopefully, that you'll see a tutorial every weekday from now on if I can keep my schedule right. Uh, and I'm not sure what I'll be doing at the weekend, but I want to try and upload then as well. Although you've seen my schedule when it comes to vlogging, some of you may be. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to also try and upload the Tritone Shader Patch today, just to get both of them out of the way, so that I can move on to some more complicated stuff. I'm trying to, as I said, I'm trying to make these videos just to get back into the habit of doing it, being able to edit them and put them out quickly on a schedule. Uh, also just talking to the camera, being comfortable with that. It's all part of the process. So yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing and all the comments and engagement and likes that you've given me so far. Uh, I'm not really looking at the camera. See, that's something I have to learn. I'm looking more at myself in the little screen than I am in at the camera lens. So yeah, I have to get used to that again. Uh, but yeah, I'm rambling on now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.